Hello everyone and welcome back to the knockouts of the FTX Crypto Cup. We are continuing with the second match between Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura. If you've been following yesterday the game, uh, well the match ended in a draw. Uh, both of them won both of their games with the white pieces. So it was a pretty pretty fun uh, day. Uh, but now this one is really really spectacular. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. So uh, without further ado, let's check it out. A lot of things to cover as a lot of things uh, have happened. So Magnus with the white pieces again opens with E4 and again we are going to have uh well the joko piano we have knight to f6 uh, knight to f3 knight c6 bishop to c4 uh we have bishop to c5 and now uh yes now magnus castle i'm i'm pretty sure he's saving all the good stuff for you know maybe semi-finals or the finals uh so here he castles we have knight to f6 and now d3 uh we have castles by hikaru rook to e1 and now if you remember if you've been following the channel for quite some time uh, i always mentioned that knight to g4 isn't really doing anything for black because uh well if the knight comes here then the, you can simply defend this with rook to e2 and then kick away the knight but this is exactly what hikaru plays so he's trying to uh, mix things up here so Magnus does go rook to e2 defends his pawn and next he's gonna kick away the knight with h3 uh, we have king to h8 by Hikaru getting away from this diagonal preparing f5 and now h3 and now Hikaru of course goes for the sharpest move possible and that is f5 f5 is basically the only good move uh, for black here because that's why you play this line with knight to g4 point is that if white gets greedy and goes after the knight then uh, black will most likely win this game for example captures the knight here the knight has to move somewhere you can see there's incredible pressure here on the f2 pawn then you can play g3 the pawn cannot capture and this is just terrible for white uh, if you go knight f3, if you try to save your piece, then even the rook captures on f3, g captures and queen h4, and now you're getting checkmated. So this is uh, uh, this is not Hikaru's plan. Of course, Hikaru knows that Magnus will not fall for this, but uh, you know uh, he maybe studied this a little bit more uh, specifically for this match. So this is where he's going to look for his chances. Uh, Magnus played bishop to g5, which is the most common move here. There is one uh, notable game, uh, Wesley So versus Anish Giri from the 2016 Bil Bilbao Masters, where uh, Wesley played knight to c3 and he defeated Giri with this move. But here. Uh, like I said, we have bishop to g5, attacking the queen, uh, and now knight back to f6. Uh, the knight now just defends, and now we continue with knight to c3 and d6. So just like nothing happened, uh, but by playing this knight to g4 move, Hikaru was uh, able to sneak in this f5 move, and now uh, his rook will, well, very soon have a nice semi-open f file to use for attack. Knight to d5 by Magnus, now f captures on e4, d captures, and now bishop to e6. Here we have a, a couple of trades, knight captures on f6, and now uh, there is a game where bishop captures on c4 was played, but here we have g captures on f6 by Hikaru, and it is now already as of move 13 that we have a completely new game, and it seems that this is what Hikaru prepared. Now he's going to use the g file for attack, and let's see how Magnus deals with this. Magnus first eliminates the light square bishop, uh, we have f captures on g5 and now c3 nicely controlling this knight so the knight cannot uh, jump jump into the game uh, and now you also uh, well if needed you, you have queen b3 queen to a4 all depends on what what black plays uh, we have queen to f6 by Hikaru going after the bishop here, and Magnus retreats it. We have knight to e7 now, and now uh, you can see that Hikaru's position uh, is very, very solid. He's planning to bring the knight to g6, from there the knight can come to h4 to f4, uh, depending on what white plays, but he has uh, a lot of good moves, and uh, his plan is very simple. He's probably going to move this rook here, bring this rook to f8, or maybe he can even triple up here on the f file. Uh, and Magnus uh, spent some 7 minutes for his next move, as it's not all that clear what to do he played queen to d2 uh, and now he's going for the g5 pawn and hikaru just defends it with rook to g8 so this rook can now come to f8 uh, we have b4 by magnus uh, uh attacking this bishop here bishop back to b6 and now a4 of course playing f a5 would be the dream for white uh not uh even even if you don't win the bishop even if six c6 was already played but you just want to get the dark square bishop away from this diagonal uh, of course hikaru will not allow this he plays a5 and now queen to a2 by magnus magnus knows that his his position uh, isn't all that impressive and he's very much low on time he has some four and a half minutes on the clock whereas Hikaru has almost 11 minutes on the clock and now he wants to play queen to e6 and get uh, maybe trade queens and um, well try and survive this attack uh, Hikaru just plays queen to g6 uh, we have queen to e6 by Magnus and now Hikaru goes uh, queen to g7 here Hikaru uh, misses a, a bit of a 
uh, well, uh, a, a very nice move here with h5 because now uh, after playing h5 the bishop uh, doesn't really have any good squares you could go to f5 but only then we move uh, the queen to g7 and black's position is fine and the problem with trading here uh, is that if you capture on h5 now then knight f4 just uh, wins material as your bishop and rook on e2 are under attack so maybe a slight improvement here uh, but okay queen to g7 by hikaru uh, we have b captures on a5 uh, bishop captures now for the moment the bishop leaves this diagonal and rook to b1 going after this uh, pawn here so now while well, you could bring the bishop back Karl just goes rook to a7 uh, defending the pawn like this and now uh, keeping uh, the, the bishop here to target the, the c3 pawn uh, we have queen to c4 defending the pawn and now queen to g6 so what do you play here now the queen again guards the h5 square and hikaru wants to push h5 uh, and there is okay magnus uh, i'm not going to tell you what magnus played here because there is a really really awesome move here so feel free to pause the video and try to find a really cool idea for white while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding rook to b5 because this is what Magnus played. However, there is a much nicer move and that is knight to d4. Knight to d4 is simply a beautiful move because now you can shift your knight to f5 and you've pretty much solved all of your problems. Uh, there is nothing uh, There is nothing good happening here for black. And the other thing is if the knight is captured, well then look at this. This is very unfortunate for black. We're just going to capture on d4 deliver check and after queen g7 we're going to pick up the rook on a7 so this was in the position congratulations to everyone who found it uh, as uh well obviously not an easy move to spot in a rapid game so here rook to b5 by magnus now with a lot of pressure on the e file magnus might be thinking about sacrificing a piece here to open up this diagonal uh, and hikaru goes for c6 here he uh, even uh, forces this to happen or he just says okay go back with the rook uh, and the problem is okay maybe rook captures would be a bit too aggressive yes you attack the queen but after queen f6 you don't really have a good follow-up if knight f7 check we just attack the knight twice and that's it black just wins so magnus decided to go for the other trade he played knight captures on e5 giving up the knight for two central pawns uh pawn captures and now rook captures on e5 but the rook captures on e5 is not the most correct way to play this uh, again magnus misses um, a slightly better idea uh, which is to just play uh, instead of rook captures here rook captures on a5 and now after rook captures on a5 just queen before with a double attack here and now after the rook goes back now we capture on e7 and then we continue playing this so now white's position is is much better uh, but here after rook captures on e5 well he just gives hikaru uh, a bit too much we have rook to d8 and now hikaru says uh, you're welcome to, to take my knight uh, the problem is if magnus does this rook captures on uh, e7 then we have this check and after king to h2 uh, queen to uh, d6 is just uh, game over for white as you blunder a rook here so it's uh, never never a good idea to try and tackle hikaru when, when it comes to tactics uh, so here we have rook to e6 by magnus attacking the queen but just queen to g7 now the knight is nicely defended uh, and the magnus wants to eliminate uh, all of uh, his problems along the dark squares so now he simply plays g3 so now if this rook ever comes here you can simply move the king and you're going to be very safe here and uh well that's only one of the problems for magnus his position is worse but he's also down to 22 seconds on the clock whereas hikaru has over six minutes and here hikaru just plays rook a back to a8 he says all right you use your 20 seconds uh, as uh, as well as you can i'm just going to improve my position slowly but surely uh we have king to g2 by magnus now knight g6 now again this knight uh, is uh controlling a lot of squares here g3 has been played so these two squares have been taken care of uh, but, uh, you know, uh, you, you have to play something. We have e5 by Magnus. Uh, now, this is a very dangerous pass pawn, but Hikaru immediately attacks it with bishop to c7, and now there's a triple attack on the pawn. Uh, not much hope of uh, defending it. So here, Magnus has to give it up. He plays bishop to f5, but now Hikaru just grabs it. He di didn't even uh, think about it for all that much, maybe 10 seconds. He wants to uh, force Magnus to really waste his time. So here, Magnus finds queen to b4, and it's a very nice move not only attacking the b7 pawn but also rook to e7 is coming and then you might uh, really have some problems because the bishop covers h7 
Also, the Dark Square Bishop would be attacked. So Hikaru cannot allow this. He plays Rook to F8, now ready to uh, block this Rook with Rook to F7. Uh, Magnus goes for it, and now Rook to F7. Uh, Magnus now grabs on B7, attacks this Rook, uh, but Hikaru just doubles up nicely on the F file. Magnus trades once, we have captures, captures, uh, or rather Queen captured on F7, uh, and now comes Bishop back to E4. The Bishop is under attack, so Bishop here goes after this pawn, and now if Magnus eliminates this pawn then okay he has two pass pawns uh for for the piece so this again uh, could become playable but now hikaru says all right let's start the attack he pushes h5 now h4 is coming and if the position opens up then that's pretty much all there is to say about this game uh, Magnus says, all right, I have nothing better. I have to eliminate the pawn and hope for the best. Hikaru now goes queen to c4 with a double attack on the bishop here, but also just ready to eliminate one of the past pawns. So here, bishop to b5, and now comes queen captures on c3. And Magnus centralizes with queen to e4. So again, uh, how do you how do you play this with black? Well, Hikaru plays queen to c5. Now, uh, you will not be able to start advancing your pawn, even if the bishop wasn't defending, now the bishop would be hanging. Also, there's a lot of pressure here on the f2 pawn, and still, Hikaru is just waiting for the perfect moment to push that pawn to h4. Uh, we have rook to c2 by Magnus, attacking the queen, now comes queen to d6. Now, uh, what do you play here? Magnus goes bishop back to e2, uh, and now there's really not all that much for Magnus to do here. Uh, there was one move here that you kind of could play, but it's, uh, I mean, it's such an ugly move to play queen to b7. This kind of allows you to prolong the game. And now if you play something like, let's say, bishop to b6, put pressure on this pawn, now you can maybe do a rook lift with rook here. But it's uh, uh, not something you, you find in a, in a rapid game. And black is still better here, of course, but it's a one way to fight. Now maybe you can harass the black king and maybe maybe good things will happen uh, but okay uh, after queen to d6 bishop back to e2 was played by magnus but now uh we have h4 finally h4 is on the board uh, Magnus plays G captures and now comes knight to G6. Now the knight again threatening to come here, to come here. Uh, and also there's queen to H2, king F1 and queen to H1. Uh, okay, uh, H1 for the moment covered by the by the white queen. But still, you do not want to allow this. Because for example, check king F1 and then the queen can capture on F2 with checkmate. Uh, because the bishop now covers this pawn. So here we have king to F1, not allowing this to come with check. And the bishop back to b6. Again, Hikaru threatening to pick up the f2 pawn. Bishop to f3, defending. And here, uh, well, you want to make sure you don't make the mistake of capturing on h4. Although it looks like a really awesome move, uh, it completely blunders the game because rook c6 and that's it. The queen is under attack and there's nothing to play here. It, once the queen moves, let's say you want to guard the bishop, uh, it's just a very nice rook h6 check king here and queen to h7 checkmate. So Hikaru has to be uh, extremely precise here and he is. He plays knight to e5. Uh, we have rook to d2 attacking the queen here. Uh, and now comes queen to c5. Uh, the thing is, you don't want to capture this rook. It's not a free rook. If you capture the rook, then queen captures here, and now black is again in big trouble. This comes with check. Doesn't matter what you play, bishop d5 check, king h7, queen to e7 with check, and that's it. Let's say here, h5 check, and... Uh, whatever you do you're getting checkmated uh, a nice one is king captures and queen to h7 checkmate because the pawn covers the g4 square so instead after rook to d2 hikaru just improves further with queen to c5 uh, and here magnus goes to rook to c2 continues harassing hikaru's queen but now hikaru does what hikaru does best uh, and you might uh, also so feel free to pause the video and win this game uh, for hikaru in the coolest way possible wh while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on, uh, of course, going for the for the move. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's, of course, Knight Captures on F3. Uh, a beautiful, uh, really, really temporary queen sacrifice, but you're going to win the queen right back because there's this Knight to D2 check. A beautiful fork, and there's nothing better for Magnus. He has to capture the queen, Knight to D2 with check, for forking the king and the queen, king E2, and now we pick up this... Uh, uh, piece here uh, and now Magnus only has a rook and Hikaru has a rook a bishop and a knight but Magnus still has the passed a pawn and he's gonna do his best to, to, to maybe somehow get a draw here so here bishop captures an f2 Hikaru continues happily winning pieces 
uh, pawns. Uh, we have h captures, knight captures, and now a5. Magnus starts pushing his pass pawn, knight to e4, and now king d3. Uh, we have knight to c5 check, king to c4, and now knight to b7. Attacking the pawn here, uh, we have rook to h6 by Magnus, king g7, now rook h5, defending this pawn, uh, but uh, it's uh, of little use. We have rook to a8, attacking the pawn twice, now Magnus plays rook to f5, he attacks the bishop here, but Hikaru instantly plays it, and I know you guys all see it, uh, of course, knight to d6, even Magnus uh, isn't immune to... Uh, falling for, for a nice fork here and there, uh, but it happens. When there are too many threats to parry, you will fall for one of them, whether it's just a pass pawn, or a nice fork, a nice skewer, a nice whatever, uh, you know, uh, the position simply deteriorates uh, onto itself and there's nothing you can do. So after knight to d6, it was in this position that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game, and game one again goes to Hikaru, so now it's up to Magnus to bounce back. We'll see what happens as game two is already on the way. So uh, that's the game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we'll see. We'll see uh, if the action will uh, continue this fiercely. Uh, I would like to thank Roberto Gomez, Geki Ikia, uh, Sean Illis, uh, Ryan Yaglovsky, ya uh, and Yarden Mesu uh, Mesu Mesulam uh, for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of this very nice event, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens uh, in the chess world. Thank you all. Uh, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.